Hey artist friends, welcome back to my channel. I hope that you're having an incredible day and I am super excited because this is gonna be the first video that I have ever published about oil paint. Oil paint is one of my favorite painting mediums together with watercolor. So in today's video, I'm going to be sharing the general process that I currently go through when I'm creating a still life oil painting from how I create an effective looking photograph to how I prepare before starting a painting and the general steps that I go through throughout the painting process. If this is your first time visiting my channel, welcome guys, I'm super glad you're here. Consider subscribing because every single Friday I share a new video about art tips, drawing and painting tutorials, and general encouragement for beginner and intermediate artists. Also make sure to click on the little notification bell so that YouTube can let you know whenever I publish a new video. My name is Erica, I'm a traditional media illustrator, art blogger, and teaching artist that has a passion not only for creating art myself, but also for sharing my skills and encouraging aspiring artists out there. I do this through both this YouTube channel and my blog at ericalancaster.com. I would love for you to check it out. Having said all that, give me a like if you're as excited as I am to continue developing your artistic skills and let's get into the video. Okay everyone, so in this video I'm going to be giving you sort of a general walkthrough in terms of what I currently do when I create a still life oil painting. Now. This is not going to be a very specific step-by-step -step tutorial of how to create a still life oil painting. I'm just going to be giving you sort of the general steps that I make sure to do. I will make sure, however, to create step-by-step -step tutorials about oil painting in the future. The first thing I did before starting with this painting process was I produced a great art reference photo. Now, when you are creating your own art reference photos or even looking for one that you're not creating yourself, there are a few things that you have to have in mind in order for it to lead to an effective artwork. I actually created a blog post and a YouTube video a while back going more in depth into what it takes to create a great art reference photo that I'm going to make sure to leave a link to down below in the description box so you can check that out. It's really not that hard to do and it doesn't have to take that much time. And by taking your own art reference photos, you are actually ensuring that your artwork is completely 100% original and your own. So I highly recommend that you learn the basics of photography at least and learn about what makes a composition appealing and harmonious to the eye so that you can start forming your own art reference library. But generally speaking, the things that I make sure to have in my mind as I am creating my still life setup and taking my pictures are things like light and shadows and making sure that the colors in all of the different elements within my composition go well with each other. I also make sure to have variety in mind as I am selecting my objects for my arrangement so that I have differences in textures, shapes, and sizes so that all of these things can complement each other and at the end my composition is interesting to look at. Also, for the most part, when I'm creating my arrangements myself, I try to set up a background that is a neutral color using a bed sheet or a large piece of cardboard or something like that. Something that I personally love incorporating into my work is an asymmetrical balance. And something that helps me do this is keep in mind the rule of thirds and sometimes even overimposing the rule of thirds grid onto my pictures later on as I am cropping them in my photo editing software. The rule of thirds is not by any means something that you should absolutely 100% follow all the time and it's not the only method of ensuring a harmonious composition, but it's definitely something that I think is valuable to know. Step number two in my still life oil painting process is to transfer my photos from my photo shoot onto my computer and open them up in a photo editing software like Photoshop. 
While in Photoshop, sometimes I clean up my photo a little bit or I increase the contrast a bit. But the main thing that I do in Photoshop is that I need to crop the picture or resize it so that it's exactly the same proportion that my canvas or my substrate for painting is going to be. So that that image that I'm looking at is exactly in the proportion that I'm going to be creating my fi finalized artwork in, but at scale, if that makes any sense. Once I have my photo ready, my next step, which would be step number three in this list, would be to stain or tone my canvas using a thinned out neutral colored oil paint. For this specific piece, I decided to go with raw sienna and I used odorless mineral spirits to thin it out. When you're toning a canvas, you don't really want to leave a lot of paint behind because you don't want this to affect the colors that you're placing on top. You don't want them to blend together. The point of toning a canvas is just so that the whiteness of your canvas or your substrate doesn't affect the way that you see the colors that you're placing on top. Many times, the starkness of the white of our canvas tends to affect our perception of the colors that we're placing upon it. So using a small amount of paint and a good amount of mineral spirits, I use my blue shop towel and kind of spread it all across my canvas until there is a very thin layer of stain all over it. And it doesn't really matter if your tint isn't completely uniform all throughout your canvas. Step number four for me is to create a very loose sketch using a darker neutral tone. In this case, I used a burnt umber, but I have also used a less thinned out version of the same color that I used to stain my canvas with sometimes. So if you've watched any of my drawing videos before or read some of my drawing blog posts, you probably already know by now that I'm a big proponent of freehand drawing. For me, personally, I prefer to continue exercising my observational and drawing skills through freehand drawing and I much prefer things being slightly different from my picture and them being much more expressive than tracing and copying everything so that it's all exactly the same as it is in my reference picture. So when I am creating that initial loose sketch, even though it is loose and expressive, I make sure that things that my composition in general looks spot on overall and the perspective looks correct before starting to paint. The next step for me, step number five, would be to select the colors that I'm going to be using for my painting by looking at my reference picture, and I usually try to limit them. For this specific painting, I used raw sienna, burnt sienna, burnt umber, primary magenta, sap green, lemon yellow, and titanium white. I also used a tiny bit of ivory black at the end to create the shadows of the objects on the white table. Once I have selected my colors and prepared my tubes of paint, it is time to start blocking in the largest shapes of color that I perceive in my reference picture. So at this point, I don't worry too much about being too perfect with those shapes because they're going to be refined along the way. What I want to do is cover up large spaces in my canvas using relatively thinned out paint. Definitely not as thin as I used before to stain my canvas, but still they have some solvent in them. If you already have experience painting with oil paints, you are probably already well aware of the fat over lean rule. This is very important because it is going to help ensure that your paint layers dry correctly. This is an entire topic in and of itself that you should definitely look into, but generally speaking, what I make sure to do is to make sure that my initial layers of paint are runny and they get thicker and thicker and contain less solvent as I go on. For this specific painting, I didn't use any oil painting medium at all in combination with my solvent. And honestly, I have yet to find an oil painting medium that I enjoy using. 
but I am exploring different fast drying options because since I do sell my work and create commissions, I am very interested in being able to produce and sell my work faster. As I start laying down those initial layers of paint color and those largest shapes, I am focusing mostly on the darkest values of every different color that I am seeing in my photograph, if that makes any sense. I do my best to use the white and create those paint mixtures that require white until the later half of the painting process. And the reason why I try to wait as long as possible to start adding in those paint mixtures that contain white is because the white tends to dull out the darker, vibrant, saturated paint colors that you have already placed on your canvas, especially if you start over blending everything. When you are starting to lay down those initial layers or shapes of your paint onto your canvas, it's very useful to squint at your picture because this is going to allow you to sort of tune out all of the details. And this is also going to help you pinpoint the darkest areas so that you can lay them down right away. The next phase in my process is what I like to call the ugly phase. And at this point, I start to pinpoint different values in my picture, different colors that I should be creating, different color mixtures, and placing them as I see fit, constantly looking at my reference picture. I am starting to place my paint on my canvas thicker and thicker, and it almost gets to a point at which I am using them straight out of the tube. And I think it's important for me to say here that I love working wet in wet. I love a la prima painting. For example, this painting that you're seeing me do right now is a painting that I created pretty much in one sitting. It took me about four or five hours to do. And of course, I don't always do it this way, though at the end a lot of my paintings do end up with a similar visual style but whenever I do have a few free hours and I am able to focus and dedicate my evening or a good chunk of my day to a painting I absolutely love doing a la prima painting I really love the freshness, spontaneity and sort of expression that a la prima painting allows and though this isn't a video about a la prima painting and I am not getting into this technique in depth at all right now, I am going to kind of mention here that something very important about this technique is that you have to be very careful not to over blend. Because I am working wet on wet and over blending leads to muddy colors, I am trying to limit the amount of brush strokes that I create. I try to limit my blending only where truly necessary and this is still something I'm working on but I'm trying to lay down those brush strokes as confidently as possible so that I can really leave them behind and have them visible. And the final phase in my painting process is going to be to add in the final little details and I just love doing this with a palette knife. I just love leaving some areas of my paintings with high texture to them. And finally, this is also the point at which I add in my lightest highlights. Okay guys, so that is it in terms of my current still life oil painting process. And just to finish up this video, I just want to encourage you guys to explore still life painting if you haven't already. Working with still life is a great challenge and opportunity for you to have total and complete control of your compositional arrangement. Whether you are working from life or from a reference picture that you're taking yourself. And to finish up, I just want to remind you guys that even though you're using a reference photograph or you're actually using something that you have right in front of you if you're drawing or painting from life. Use your artistic license and change things up if you want to. Put a bit of yourself in your artwork and try to add your style to it. 
I always find it super interesting at the end to sort of compare my reference photograph side by side with my finalized painting and sort of analyze how my personal style was able to come through. Okay everyone, so that is it for today. I hope that you found this video helpful and that it inspired you to go and try some things out for yourself. Remember that that is the only way that you're really going to improve. I would love to know in the comment section below what your oil painting experience has been like, what you like or dislike about this medium. And if you have never tried to paint with oils before, I would love to know what you do to prepare an excellent art reference photo to work from. 
Okay, everyone, so thank you so much for checking out this video today. I really, really appreciate it. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel, and see you next Friday.